Today we're gonna to be starting a new series. We're actually gonna be talking about how to start in photography. And there's a lot of people out there that are interested in photography right now. Um, obviously, photography can be a really cool profession and it can also be a really fun hobby if you're just kinda of looking to do it for fun. But it can also be a little bit overwhelming in terms of all the options and what's out there right now. There's so many different camera brands, uh, so many different lenses, so many different this, so many different that, that it can be a little bit overwhelming. So just based off of some of the questions that I've had um, in terms of the cashed out channel and just in, in doing my work you know during the day obviously I do photography and videography and there's been some clients that have asked me questions there have been some friends that have asked me questions there's a lot of people are, are curious about what it takes to actually get started in photography so I wanted to do this series we're gonna cut hit a couple of different videos to really just kind of help you get an understanding of what you really need to get going um, there's a lot out there that's being marketed and promoted but it's not necessarily crucial to what you need to get started started so for this video we're gonna start off by talking about what you really need in terms of picking your first camera and that's usually kind of like a big step because obviously you can't do photography if you don't have a camera that's like step one right you need a camera you need to be able to capture those images capture the vision that you see so we're gonna talk about some of the things to look for in your first camera just kind of three key areas of things to consider when it comes to picking your first camera now, when it comes to camera brands, um, everybody has their preference. You know, there's some people that are Sony shooters or some people that are Nikon, Canon, Fuji, whatever. The list goes on, right? I've honestly had the opportunity to shoot on a ton of different brands. I've, I started off shooting Sony and then I switched over to Nikon and then I switched over to Canon. Um, I've bounced around to different, actually even shot Panasonic for a little bit there. But that's part of, um, I think, what's really helped me in finding out what I like and what I don't like. Um, it's really getting that opportunity to get a feel with each and each camera brand now that is an expensive way to learn <laughs> about what's what's important I don't recommend just bouncing from from line to line because that can be really pricey and frustrating especially when you're starting to get started and um, what I would say in terms of getting started the the camera brand doesn't really matter as much because each brand no matter what brand you get these days you're gonna be able to create a lot of really good images with it right a lot of it kind of stems from there's other elements of photography beyond the camera brand so don't get too caught up on the brand but there are some things that you need to look for in a camera brand when it comes to getting started with photography and one of those things is ease of entry right how easy is it for you to be able to get into the ecosystem of that brand right there are some brands that are super expensive to be able to get into their their base level right their base level of camera is super expensive so obviously those aren't the brands that you want to dig into there are certain brands where they're line of lenses is minimal right there you can only use their line of lenses you can't adapt other lenses you can't switch things up so those are some things to consider is just kind of look into how cost effective is it to get started with this brand and also how easy is it to continue to expand your tools how easy is it to, to add flashes how easy is it to be able to to add other aspects um, to that brand right because there's some brands that are almost like you're tied into just using their lenses or tied into using their accessories and you can't use other ones right so I'm not I'm not here to tell you which brands are better you really it's just one of those things to keep an eye out for these things as you're looking for your first camera so ease of entry how affordable is it um, what kind of uh, opportunities does it give you in terms of adding lenses do they have a lot of lenses do they have a lot of opportunity to adapt lenses for example what can they allow you to be able to use like a, a Sigma lens you know can you adapt a different type of lens to be able to use it on that camera body so just some of the things to, to keep in mind as you're looking for it so ease of entry is probably one of the first things you want to keep in mind when it comes to choosing the camera brand for you now the other thing that you need to consider as you're getting started in your photography journey as you're shopping around is what features do you actually need right there's a lot of features that get marketed right there's a ton of features like you can get 400 megapixels you can get you know whatever speeds with your flat you can do this you can do that but but what features do you really need right I would say here's some things that you really shouldn't focus on these are some features that I say don't focus on as a beginner just kind of you know be mindful of them but you 
you don't really need to, to be locked in and commit to just these features. And one of the, the those features is honestly megapixels. When I was getting started in photography, I used to think that the more megapixels a camera had, the better it was, right? That, that was completely false. It's not true at all. Uh, honestly, a lot of that is kind of marketing hype in, in many cases because the megapixels don't really determine how good of an image you can create. Now, there are places where higher megapixels are important, right? If you're doing like magazine photography or if you're doing photography that requires a lot of details, like yes, you will need some higher megapixel, higher resolution cameras to be able to, to capture those specific details. Like if you're doing blow up prints or, you know, things like that, then yeah, maybe you might need that 30 to 40 megapixels and things like that. But for you as a beginner, if you're just getting started, honestly, most typical, you know, entry level cameras have maybe about 20 to 24 megapixels, and that's more than enough. There are some even higher priced cameras right now that only have 12 megapixels, and they still create great images. So you don't really need a ton of megapixels. That's one of the things that can be confusing when you're getting started, because you think more is better, but it's not, that's not necessarily the case, right? So don't worry about megapixels. That's one of the features that shouldn't be like your deciding factor for what camera to choose as a beginner. The other feature that you know gets marketed a lot is sensor size, right? Sensor size, there's full frame sensors, there's micro four thirds, there's crop sensors, it's a bunch of different sensor sizes. But as a beginner, you don't really need to be concerned about your sensor size. Most beginner cameras are probably gonna be crop sensored cameras, so those are perfectly fine, right? There are full frame cameras, they have bigger sensors, but as a beginner, sensor size is not a huge issue. The crop sensor will be good enough to be able to get you understanding the basics of photography, get you understanding how to work with your camera uh, composition. There's other aspects to photography that even a crop sensor camera can help you learn that you don't really need a full frame sensor until your skills require it. So don't get caught up with sensor size. That's another one that you don't really need to be mindful of. And the other one is frames per second, right? Frames per second is just like uh, megapixels. It's one of those that, yeah, it's it's important, you know, in certain roles, right? In certain senses, if you're shooting for photography for uh, sports or like high speed stuff, then frames per second is going to be huge, right? Obviously, you want to make sure your shoot your camera can keep up with that. But when you're just getting started, don't really worry about that. That's not something to, to really be concerned about. So, so those are just some of the features that honestly, you know, obviously they, there's more. We can make this list like, like a million miles long. But those are just some of the ones that I know for me. I was kind of like, because I'm, I'm a techie kind of guy. So especially when it comes to photography, I was digging into like all the, the stats and things like that. You'd hear uh, other YouTubers talk about it does that, you know, has this many megapixels. It can shoot the, this many frames per second, you know, blah, 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 full frame. But really it, it became overwhelming and it's not really crucial. As a beginner, those features don't really matter, but there are certain features that you really need to focus on. And one of those features is the ability to be able to have multiple shooting modes, right? Multiple shooting modes. And what I mean by that is being able to shoot in aperture priority, uh, being able to shoot in shutter priority, being able to shoot in manual. Can the camera allow you to shoot in those different modes? And those different modes are important because they will help you along your journey as you become better. The goal as a, as, a, as a photographer, as a beginning photographer, what you want to learn is you want to learn the basics, right? There are some things that you want to practice on until you master, and then you can continue to proceed on. Eventually, the goal is to be able to get you shooting completely manual, where you have complete control over all the settings of your camera. But having a camera that has those modes built in already is a great place to start in terms of something that's important for a beginner, right? Because that will allow you to, to continue to grow with your camera until you get to that place where you're shooting it in manual, you have complete mastery over it, and you can be able to play it, play around and take your skills to the next level. The other feature that you really need to, to have in your beginner camera is the ability to have interchangeable lenses. Now, this doesn't have to be like fancy, super expensive lenses. Honestly, like for example, the Canon M mount lenses, like the M200s, M50s, those are perfect for beginners, right? They're little tiny lenses. They're not super expensive, but they allow you to be able to practice with interchangeable lenses, right? Because as you progress as a photographer, you're going to have bigger and better cameras that are going to allow you to be able to use bigger and better lenses, right? And the lens, the purpose of the lens is to allow you to be able to, to either capture a perspective or allow you to put a creative 
creative twist in the photo that you're trying to do. It's not about just hoarding and having a whole stash of fancy lenses. It's about having lenses that have a purpose, right? That have a tool. I mean, for me, for example, with the work that I do, I primarily have in my camera bag just two lenses. I have a 28 to 70 lens, right? And I have a 70 to 200 lens. And each of those lenses has different purposes and they allow me to be able to capture different things in different forms, right? If you've already been practicing and you're, you've started with a camera that allows you to do that at a lower level, as you move on, it's not gonna be any different. It's just gonna be different styles of lenses. So having a camera that can have those interchangeable lenses is a really good feature to, to keep an eye out for. And the last feature that I think would be important for you as a beginner is to be able to find a camera that has the ability to capture raw images, right? Now, when you're getting started, you probably don't understand how to edit raw images or you probably don't even know what a raw image is, right? <laughs> so a raw image is just the one that captures a ton more detail. So you can do a JPEG, which is almost like just a standard image that's pretty much baked in with a lot of information or you can do a raw image which is pretty much takes all that data it's a bigger image file but it takes all that data of your photo and allows you to be able to do some post-production with that image allows you to be able to co correct more of the lighting correct more of the colors it gives you more flexibility in post-production to be able to create the image the way that you want it to be um, so the raw images are typically going to be a little bit more flatter they're not going to be um, as saturated or as poppy as a jpeg um, but they'll allow you to be able to do more in post-production so so raw image processing is a good feature to have because it allows you to be able to grow with that camera. And that's kind of part of the things that for me, the mistake that I did early on is I bought cameras that yes, were affordable, but they kind of didn't have those features that allowed me to grow, that allowed me to grow with that camera as my skills continue to grow. So that's kind of learning from my mistakes as a beginner is just make sure that you get a camera that has some of these features already built in. So if you're investing in your camera yeah maybe you might be paying you know five to seven hundred dollars for it but it's something that you can use for a longer period of time instead of paying maybe you know four you know three to four hundred dollars for a camera and then have to just turn around and buy another camera once your skills outgrow that camera so really as you're looking for a camera it's just finding one that you can grow with that you as you invest into it it's something that you can continue to to get better with as you sharpen your skills as a photographer so just a couple ideas just a couple concepts some things to consider and keep in mind as you're looking to buy your first camera like I said don't get caught up in terms of the megapixels or in terms of those marketable stats make sure to look for a camera that will allow you to continue to grow find a camera that has those different shooting modes a camera that allows you to be able to switch out the lenses and a camera that allows you to be able to shoot some raw images so you can continue to sharpen your skills there's really not a ton of like bells and whistle features that are that are critical as you're learning photography because the the camera is honestly just a tool it's not the be all end all of your photography career. It's really just a tool for you to express the image and the, the vision, the creativity, the ideas that you have inside of you. So don't get hung up in terms of buying your first camera. Keep those aspects in mind. And then, you know, as we move forward with the series, we're going to talk about different aspects of photography and different aspects of your camera as well that can help you really get off to a good start in photography. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Hopefully it helps you out in terms of helping you get started in photography. We're going to be continuing this series. Be sure to like subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out but we're going to be continuing this series to be able to kind of help you get started in photography and help you get off to a good start uh, we're going to be covering some different features of your camera some different aspects different ways to use it but also some thought process and mindsets and concepts of photography that will really help you take your game to the next level so keep your eye open for that and i will catch you guys on the next one